I think it's a little bit high. Now you're looking at me. You guys, it's November. Isn't that insane? My name is Logan and I'm the Bi Book Boy. I am a chaotic bisexual and I read books, sometimes early in the morning. Right now it's after work and I've had like multiple shots of espresso. I tried to shave my face with hairspray this morning, you guys. <laughs> so if you watched my introduction video way back in the days of ye olde other apartment when I started this channel, I talked about loving memoirs and then I never said anything else about it. And since memoirs are nonfiction, and November is nonfiction month, um, and I gotta do at least one week of nonfiction, I'm gonna talk about my three favorite November, um, memoirs. The book that started my obsession with reading about other people's lives, if you ask me, but of course you won't, by Betty White. This book is first of all hilarious because it's Betty White. I think this is her third memoir? Basically, it goes through her early career and charts out her when she first started as an actress and a comedian all the way until present day when she wrote this, which was 2011. I found this book when I was in high school and it really helped me get out of my shell. I was a young person that wanted to become an actor, possibly a comedian, but I grew up in a really tiny town and I didn't really know much about the world. And it was really fun to just see somebody who has been around literally since before sliced bread talk about all the times that she had to overcome confidence issues and things like that and be funny about it. It was really wonderful. There's a lot of really wonderful life lessons in this book and just really great little anecdotes about like behind the scenes on all of the different things that Betty White has done because she's been around forever. And it's just really fun because you get to see inside that brain and it's it's great and I love it. Um, yeah, I just love Betty White and I would love to age into her someday. Evolve into Betty White. <laughs> it's my final form right here. <laughs> anyway. I have read this book probably three times now just because it's like a nice little confidence bolster when I when I need it, when I need guidance, I go back to it. Go read it. It's great. It's on Amazon. Next is one that I read recently called How We Fight For Our Lives by Sai Jones. I have already reviewed this on this channel when I first read it, but I want to talk about it again because it's really important. Sai Jones chronicles his life and his experience, which is a very specific experience, as a black gay man in America, which is a very specific experience. You got oppression coming from all sides right there, which just screws everything up and it's insane. I went into this book hoping to have my mind blown and learn things I never knew, give myself a reality check, and educate myself more because it's 2020. Why shouldn't we be educated more? And I actually, surprisingly, related to this a lot. Obviously on the queer side, I, because I am very white and very privileged, but specifically in his college years, Saeed chronicles what it's like to come out in the LGBT community as a college student and how lonely that experience can be. And not to get too deep, but like, I really vibed I really vibed with that. Oh God, I've been in LA too long. Ew. <laughs> I really empathize with that because you can be surrounded by a hundred people at a party and still feel incredibly alone when you're holding a secret that no one else knows. Or when you do have something that sets you apart from the rest of everybody. It is also very hard as a queer man to make romantic connections and things that are deeper than just hooking up and things like that. Uh, for some reason, there's this stigma around commitment in society, and it really makes it interesting to navigate when you're a human being that thrives on commitment um, and connection. And he really chronicles how not only being ostracized by the LGBTQ plus community affected him, but also how being ostracized by the black community affected him. I mean, being LGBTQ plus is still very um, taboo and very ostracizing, but it's even, it's compounded by that when you are also already a member of another minority group, which is a black male who is in danger because cops and such. Um, yeah, it's really wonderful. I cried. Also, I fell in love with his relationship with his mother and 
yeah, it's just worth a read. I picked it up in an airport. I in an airport. I picked it up in an airport. Um, I picked it up in an airport, uh, and I I've seen it like basically everywhere. It took me like a day to read, and then I was in a book club, so I reread it because I read it in a day, and then we had to talk about the first half, and I went, oh no, I don't remember like where the halves stop. Uh, so I had to reread it, and it was really good, and I would reread it again, probably will. Go for it. And now we come to my third and last memoir. That was a short video. This book is a book that I found when I moved to LA. And it has really helped me navigate just being a human in this city and in the creative world and not taking myself too seriously. And that is The Ultimate How-To Guide to Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered by Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hart Stark. Murderinos unite! For those of you who do not know, Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hart Stark are the hosts of the incredible true crime comedy podcast, My Favorite Murder. Stream it anywhere on Apple Music, Stitcher, Spotify, or Google Music. It's a good time. As a person who is obsessed with true crime, I found this podcast, um, two years ago, I think, a year and a half ago, a year and a half ago, I found their podcast in which they talk about some of the most horrible things that have ever happened on, in, on the planet, and it's incredible and harrowing and terrifying. However, both of them are comedians and writers, and their defense mechanisms, as is mine, are comedy. So it's so fucking funny. Oh my god. God, you guys, you have to listen to this podcast. It has kept me going. Said podcast is very quotable, and they decided to write a joint memoir slash self-help-ish book, um, which titles chronicles just different times in their lives. It's so good. Uh, they chose, they chose, I think it's 10? I mean, let me look at the Yule Index. They chose eight of their most famous quotes and turned them into sarcastic, hilarious, but also very, seri very serious life advice. And it's so funny. Also, these two are just so relatable and that everything they say is honestly just my inner monologue. Like, this book is literally my inner monologue when living in this city, which I love, but also yeah, it's just insane and weird and there's nowhere else like it. And you really need a how-to guide to survive this book and life. And they do it. Also, it gets super deep into both of their struggles with addiction and both of their eating disorders and all kinds of just, like, super really good things that, like, everyone goes through but nobody really talks about. And they address it with incredible advice, real advice, and comedy. It's so good. I recommend that anybody who moves to LA read this book because holy shit, it's just, it's how you, literally how you survive. This should be a mandatory reading for anybody that, that moves to LA. Also, their podcast should be mandatory listening because it's just incredible and enriches you as a person and they're wonderful and they do great things. Yeah. Well, it was pretty fast, you guys. Oh, wait. I have one more thing. I feel like Steve Jobs. Shh. Wink, wink. Tech nerds know what I'm saying there. You guys, it's announcement time. Emily from Emily Reads Books and Kelsey from I Read Today are joining me in the Buy Book Club. That's right. We're starting a book club. I'm so excited, you guys. The three of us have been talking a lot about how the only time that we land on bisexual characters in books is when it's a happy accident. Because there's a lot of bi erasure in the world. So we decided, why don't we seek out books ourselves? Why don't we read at least one book with a bisexual character a month? And then we'll do a live show and talk about it. You guys, I am so excited because these are two of my favorite creators on this platform. And it's just going to be, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. The book for November is Star-Crossed by Barbara D. I don't have an exact date for when we're going live with it, uh, but I'll have that to you next video. If you want to read along with us, you're more than welcome. You can discuss the book below in the comments, and you too could be part of the Buy Book Club. Join us. I'm not breaking copyright. That's all I got for you. If you made it to the end of this video, thanks for sticking around and helping out. And if you want more semi-regular chaotic bisexual content, like, subscribe, 
hit the notification bell so you can get my videos every single week or whenever I decide to post them because it's not always exactly weekly. Sometimes it's bi-weekly. <laughs> and until next time, this has been the Bye Book Boy and I'm saying bye.